Hello and welcome to Sarvagun Sampan. I'm your host, Anu, and it is my great privilege to invite a woman who is very passionate about world cultures, world religions, especially Hindu philosophy. She's an advocate and a champion of women empowerment in the workplace. And some of her strengths include maintaining friendships. She is extremely adventurous has a great zeal and zest for life, and is very open-minded. I'd love to welcome Anu Lakaraju to Sarvagun Sampan today. Anu, welcome to the show, and how are you doing? Thank you so much, Anu. It's really an honor and a pleasure to uh, be on this show, and uh, thank you so much for thinking of me, and I think it's a wonderful initiative um, to give uh, women of uh, Indian origin uh, a chance to express their authentic self. I'm really excited about being on this show. Likewise, I can't wait to get to know you. Really understanding, uh, you know, your personality, you, you're multifaceted, you're multi-talented. There's just so many layers. So it's my goal uh, on this show to uncover some of those. I don't think we can, you know, we have enough time to cover everything. So um, let's start with uh, your childhood. We'll, uh, you know, talk about this in our segment, Bachpan Ke Din. So I'll just let you take it away from here. Thank you, Anu. Yeah, uh, Bachpan Ke Din, uh, I think for most of us, it's the best years of our life, right? And uh, they're definitely the... For me to uh, play a very large part in uh, making me who I am today. Um, so my biggest influence uh, is uh, my parents, my father and my mother. And I think uh, a large part of that is to do with who they were. So my uh, father comes from a very, very elite uh, army background. Uh, his uh, father was... Uh, Major General uh, in the British Army. He worked for the British Army. And then uh, when uh, the British uh, left the country, he was uh, transitioned to the Indian Army and he was Major major General in uh, the Indian Army. He was, uh, he was a surgeon, a physician in the Army. Um, so my, that's my grandfather. So my father had a very, uh, because of constant movement, he loved to travel. He exposed us to uh, various uh, various cultures within India itself. As you know, India itself is like <laughs> the subcontinent, they say, like, right? So uh, he really exposed us to, uh, you know, different uh, food, different this thing. Travel was a big part of us growing up. And uh, the other thing I learned from him is uh, his relationship with money was very different. Okay? He truly believed in using money as a commodity. He never got attached to money. That uh, doesn't mean he lived like a simple life. He was very flamboyant. But a large part of that is he never gave so much importance to money. He meant money was meant to be spent, shared, splurged on others, on yourself. So that's something unique uh, coming from, I think, uh, from, a, from a typical like, you know, Brahmin family. We were a Brahmin family. We were not very typical in that sense. From my mother, uh, I learned to, my mother loved, uh, my mother was an academician. She was a professor uh, and uh, she taught at College of Education and uh, part of Usmania University. And eventually she retired as a principal. So what I learned from her is uh, really a love for reading and books. So whenever there was uh, anything, uh, you know, anything we did, be uh, like, you know, I got like first rank in school or something, the gift would be a book. And we would really look forward to, there was a little, uh, I'm from Hyderabad, a shop in a uh, Hyder store in Hyderabad, bookstore called A Hussein. That was the only nice bookstore which had all kinds of uh, books from other countries to um, Enid Blyton's and which I loved uh, and all other like Amar Chitrakata comics, which uh, I think those books played a very large part in my life. My first introduction to uh, like Hindu religion and other world cultures and really Indian history, which I'm very passionate about, was through those books, was through those Amar Chitrakada comic books. But my zeal and my uh, interest in that became 
so much and at home my mom was a very spiritual lady uh, so uh, festivals was a very big big deal in uh, in uh, in uh, in our household so the good part was that we uh, my grandmother lived with us my father's mother so there was uh, really a lot of guidance like a lot of people i hear say oh we are just doing these rituals blindly we don't really know what they mean or what uh, significance they have that was not the case with me because uh, every time we are doing a festival if we do a holi we'll know exactly why we are burning the uh, flame on the day before holi you know we'll know exactly why we put uh, the those uh, little uh, cow dung go bemalu in the sankranti we know exactly why we are doing all those things so we knew the uh the story or the impact behind it um i lived in a neighborhood which was very mix of 50% i would say 30% uh, muslim back then and 25% uh, christian jew six and 50% hindu so there was a lot of celebration of we would celebrate christmas we would celebrate eid uh we'd wait for ramzan or shir kurma to come home uh hyderabadi culture very much part of my life so all that played a big impact in my life growing up that is uh, wonderful and it really you know is very evident in the way um you have carried out your own um you know life you, your interactions your friendships um the way you host uh you know your friends your family it's it's fat plan boy for sure but also reflects uh that uh bonding that uh respect for diversity and inclusion so i i you know understand where all that comes from it's uh, it's fantastic what else would you like to share about um your childhood um experiences any any memories from school days anything that uh, you carry with you even now absolutely i had uh, i had uh, two teachers who had a very big influence in my life um there was one uh, english teacher her name was i don't even remember her first name how terrible but her last name was she was mrs thomas because many times she referred to them with their last name right madam thomas uh she was in my 6th grade and uh, she really gave me a love for uh, literature because i the the more she taught us and her grammar was impeccable so i really learned a lot of love for literature uh the other teacher was uh, actually a teacher who was uh, a uh, very good our she was a math and telugu teacher uh, her name was mrs uh, hemalata uh, she is uh, passed away since then um and uh, interestingly math was my most hated subject i wish i could say she gave me a great love she changed my mind no it was it still remains my most hated dreaded subject i don't like it at all i don't find it exciting but what i like for her is she was like a mother to us uh so uh she really cared when there was like i still remember when it was like once in the summer she would tell us what to what to bring to lunch so that it doesn't get spoiled um and uh, she really had so much uh, zeal for life and i could i really know that uh, she, i felt like she was uh, she was a guru like you know i um unfortunately she passed away very young and uh, i don't think i ever got a chance to go back and meet her and the friendships uh i did not unlike my husband i didn't move cities so all my childhood friends i still have them i still meet with them regularly i still keep them the other thing uh, that had a big influence was uh, taking part in ncc i think that's where i got my adventurous spirit from uh, my mom had a large role to play she was part of ncc and i was a very timid shy very shy extremely painfully shy i would not even be able to make eye contact with uh, anybody so um, i think ncc gave me that space where you know you had to do it you had to ride a horse you had to uh, uh, do mass marksmanship you had to like go jogging in the morning and you had to it also gave me an appreciation for there's other people from other socio economic statuses who are as skilled as you and so that that makes you appreciate and understand how much uh, opportunities make a difference right uh, there are some very bright people who used to uh, you know go to government schools there maybe their parents were janitors or whatever but they used to be in these camps and it really 
gave us a uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to uh, meet all of them and i'm still friends with some of them actually and i think what's great in your case is you've also carried on uh, and you continue to cultivate some of those interests so your love for mythology your love for hindu philosophy you know you haven't really stopped it um, at high school level you have made sure that you have stayed in touch with all of that all through your life so that is truly uh, wonderful and an inspiration so uh, we'll move on to our next segment ye kahan aa gaye hum so you've talked about you know your fascinating journey uh, through your childhood school years perhaps and uh, now we're moving on to the next phase in your life uh, which is uh, you know getting married uh, relocating you know leaving your uh, known environments parents and uh, coming to a new country culture and really uh, starting from the scratch uh, if i may say so so yes. walk us through that uh, that entire journey and uh, you know we'll we'll talk about your career and all that later on but we'll now focus on ye kahan gaye hum sure absolutely so uh, so i never really had a, i was uh, like i said born and raised in the same city in the same house even so until my marriage i never left that although i had very exposed to other cultures and uh, other uh, you know traveled a lot but this was all within the safe space of that home right it was hyderabad it was that house it was that street those friends um so uh, i did want to do my higher studies in us but uh, i was like i was almost hoping it would not work out that way that i would just find somebody in the neighborhood get married and <laughs> and never have to leave home never have to leave uh, my beloved hyderabad but uh, you know i did meet my husband and uh, you know he was here so naturally i had to i had to join him so i had a very uh, one sided and narrow minded view of uh, life in america or american culture per se um, i did not under, i did not know the value of uh, freedom what it even means to be in a free country until i actually came to usa like free free country for me is like you can vote it's a democracy for that's for me that was my limited definition um so when i when i came here uh our honeymoon we went to disney world i was very young when i was got when i got married i was only 19 so i wanted to go to disney world for my honeymoon that was my concept of honeymoon so um so we went to disney world we were in epcot i still remember it was a very crowded standing room only uh the china showcase where they have the theater and we were all watching it then i did not realize that uh i was on my guard i was so all through the show and uh uh i very tense and i came out of that crowd and everybody is like you know literally standing room only like you know then i came out and i felt a big sense of relief and i realized that nobody touched me during that entire 2 hours and it was not back i'm sure india has changed now but when i was growing up that was not the case as a woman i always had to be on my guard i had to watch what i wore i had to watch when i went out where i went with whom i went uh and uh, literally it was i truly understood the meaning of freedom that day when i just felt this relief that oh i guess i can just wear a pair of shorts and just stand in a crowd full of thing and not worry about a thing and enjoy the show so i really appreciated the meaning of that uh the second time i appreciated the meaning of freedom is uh i uh, i was i had done my uh, genetics uh, bachelor's i was actually a, a gold medalist in the university level um so i was uh, thinking that that's the path i'll have to choose and i was exploring various options and uh, then i started uh, i did do my medical technology and i didn't quite like it it didn't quite jive with me i finished my bachelor's here in medical technology then um i did notice that because of the exposure that i had in the medical technology all my classmates they were like what do you want to do next and somebody wanted to be a doctor somebody wanted to go and open a business somebody wanted to become a sales person i was like is that even possible can you be can you truly be whatever what you want to be and and somebody literally said oh i'm uh, i'm getting married to my boyfriend i want to have a lot of kids i want to be a homemaker so that was something very fascinating for me so i said okay i will do it 
so i went and went back to school i'm not back to i i did my masters so i did my masters in computer science and i completely switched fields and i could do it and it was uh, i didn't need to be at it from 10th grade onwards and that was just something very fascinating to me so truly america is my karma bhumi and and when i say it's uh, when they say it's a land of opportunities or free will and freedom i really appreciate that about and uh, so that was a big learning experience for me and i learned to appreciate the niceties that are part of this culture too i am still very proud of my roots but i would say india has given me roots and america has given me wings and those two aspects are very important to a woman that is uh, so important to highlight what you've talked about so we'll move on to uh, you know uh, other issues that you have faced uh, any challenges any struggles in adjusting how were the initial days um, you know you're just growing up in america and it's been a while for you yeah. here so you want to talk about that the initial days uh, was very depressing anu because it was uh, it was i i was used to surrounded by friends okay so it was very difficult with the concept of having to go out and make friends that i never had to do that so here i had to learn that and it was seems seemed very strange that you meet somebody like an indian in a mall and you say like oh do you want to come home or whatever and you know half the time they are like selling you something or it's not even a or is it selling you a scheme it's not even like they're true friends so it was that adjustment and that outgoingness was learned it was had to i had to learn it otherwise i would have been very depressed and the connection is through the culture right? it's very important for me to have as much as i uh, jive very well with other cultures I, it's very important for me to have that cultural connect with the, because of the common background common jokes bollywood very big deal in my life so i need all that uh, so that was a struggle the other thing strangely was uh it was very awkward and an embarrassing that i couldn't understand their accent and i couldn't they couldn't understand me and uh, like i told you i considered myself some punter in english and it was very it was very humbling um and i think it was kind of a level playing field um the other thing was uh, the concept of i did tell you that i did computer science while america allows you to do that you can just show up in a masters of computer science like i had to do my prerequisites and like i just expressed math was my weakest subject and that's the foundation of computer science so what i did and i'm kind of proud of myself for doing that i don't know if i have the energy to do that i went to the bookstore and i literally got myself math school textbook from 4th grade onwards that's how weak i was in math so i started off with integers algebra advanced algebra statistics calculus advanced calculus multivariable calculus uh, i did it all in 3 months the full course from 4th grade elementary school onwards that's how poor i was in math but by the time i gave my sat i uh, i got like a 790 out of 800 in math or something like that i was some abnormal score like a 99 percentile so i'm proud of myself that i pushed myself to do that uh, that is quite an achievement so congratulations and kudos on you know doing that Up to our next segment uh, kaam ki baat you know we're talking about you've completed your um, your education your masters and uh, you know the world opens up the world of work opens up right you're now entering the workforce so uh, take us back to that first step in your journey your uh, what was your entry level job um, obviously it had to do with technology right um, so yeah. walk us through what you did after you got your masters so after i did my masters i um, i got recruited by uh, uh, price waterhouse house coopers as a as a senior consultant and i guess i got that senior consultant role because i had the masters uh, so um and uh, i did have a strong foundation technically uh, because i put myself through the effort of i didn't want to be weak in math so i first learned math then i did my masters and i also got certified in the technology that i was supporting which is happens to be sap but it would be the same for anything else whether it's 
back then, whether it's Java or C++, those were the in technologies uh, back then when I joined the workforce. So I became very strong fundamentally in technology. So the one thing that I did different is I didn't want to risk learning on the job because uh, I wanted to give myself a foundation. I wanted to get the confidence that I'm certified in this field that I'm serving. So I wasn't uh, at all winging it technically. Uh, where I did have to do a lot of learning is uh, kind of the soft skills that uh, that did not that did not come very easy or very intuitively um, because um, the work environment here was is more collaborative. But I guess I didn't really know the meaning of collaboration. I just I just back then when I first started out many years ago, I just thought it is. Uh, like working in a team, okay, and getting along. And it was okay in the initial stages, but as I started getting up into the managerial ranks, it's really the soft skills take a while to develop and it just happens through experience and mistakes and, oh, I should have done this. And I also, at some point, uh, I, I think I invested in a career counselor who I could go to regularly. Um, cost me quite a bit, but I think it was well worth it. That's how important soft skills are in uh, in any kind of management or leadership positions, more than your technical background, which is, of course, very important. That's the foundation. In technology, it's a combination of the two, the soft skills and the technical skills. And even at entry level, uh, at least I've heard a lot of employers say that they give more importance to soft skills uh, for somebody that's coming fresh into the role. Yes, uh, the technical skills can be taught, right? Any uh, advice you would give uh, to people out there uh, who are thinking of, uh, you know, joining a technology field? What kind of soft skills um, are paramount? Are there any resources that are out there that you can think of where, uh, you know, women who are interested can start at least researching, um, you know, before they even take the first step or, you know, go enroll in a course or something? Yeah, absolutely. So number one, um, the number one basic bare minimum, but and that can be learned is your foundation technically has to be very strong. You have to know your um, subject, like whatever, whether technology, whether it's SAP or whether it's like, you know, uh, Python or whatever your technology is that you're supporting. It could be a suite of tools, but that you get through your degree. Now, soft skills wise, there is a set of soft skills that are needed to slowly get into uh, leadership type of roles, like middle management or whatever. What that is, is the ability to convince and influence using your knowledge. And uh, something that I think women have intuitively, maybe men don't intuitive, most men, I mean, I'm sure there's always exceptions, is um, when you are such an expert in the subject matter, you have to be careful not to make the other person feel like, an idiot or dumb, right? You may be you may be very good at what you do, but you have a degree in it. So you have to get down to the level where you can educate them without sounding condescending. This is very hard for technicians to do. It requires a set of it requires a certain sensitivity where you can teach without actually talking down to as if you guys don't know what you're doing. You don't want to come from there. You want to always sit. Um, and uh, the second aspect is the concept of servant leadership. Okay, we associate leadership because after mid management you go go through like uh, you uh, go into more like more the leadership type of managerial positions where you're leading a large team where people are coming to you with guidance on all sorts of things. It's not just technical decisions. So uh, the concept of servant leadership is supremely important because you have to understand. Uh, especially for technology, IT, you have to understand whether you are on the product side of the house, is your company making an IT product, in which case, or are you are you on uh, the service side of the house? Are you supporting people who make products? Typically, uh, because I'm in business applications, I'm always on the service side. So your customers are internal customers. So when you talk to them, you have to understand that you're talking to your customers, okay? 
Yes, you may know more. Yes, you may know what you're doing. Yes, they may not know what they're doing. They may not even have it. They may be clueless. But in the end, they are your customers. Like, you know, in the, in the when you go to Best Buy to, to a store, the technician there like who comes and helps you, he knows a lot more than you. But in the But they don't forget that you are the customer. You may be asking the dumbest question. It's very important to keep that service orientedness in mind. Uh, and I think that's a soft skill that's kind of overlooked or missed. Um, the third is uh, not be intimidating and uh, not be too possessive about, oh, I won't teach this to anybody. Because the more you teach what you know to others, uh, if going up the ladder is your aspiration, uh, you have to be willing to learn and you have to be willing to teach. Because if you don't teach your skill set, you will not go up because you will be doing the same thing that you've possessively held to your chest and that's all you'll be stuck doing. So that's hard to do too because you feel a little insecure while doing that, right? Because you feel, oh, what if the, that person is better than he takes away my job? But that should not, that's all very petty thinking. So I think uh, those are very valuable skills as a, for, in a, in, for a technology leader. And those are amazing points and thank you so much for um, sharing those, Anu. Is there anything There's, else that you want to talk about? There's one thing I did miss. So yeah. uh, I do think eventually when you go up the ranks, I do think it's important to know how to ma manage money, some accounting knowledge, which is a technical skill for, a, for an accountant, but it's a soft skill for an IT person or a marketing person. Because eventually you all will be responsible for running your cost center. So you mm -hmm. have to know some bare thing of how you do, how do you budget? Where do you spend? Where do you conserve? So this is something I wish I learned. I just had to learn like, like on the internet through Google and the hard way and by making mistakes. But if I have to look back, I would definitely take some kind of an accounting course if uh, IT leadership or any kind of any kind of organizational leadership is in your is in your uh, thoughts. It actually helps in uh, home finance management also. And I'm glad you touched upon that. Anything else, Anu? Any other uh, words of uh, yeah. wisdom or you know, experience that you want to share with, uh, with, with? I would say, again, in the workplace, women or any other minority, whether it's uh, women or whether it's a racial minority or a religious minority, any minority, but because I'm a woman, I'm more uh, passionate about that. We have a personal personal responsibility to pay it forward. Okay, that's because we don't have proper representation, especially as you go up the ranks. So uh, like see if there's opportunity to mentor and see if there's opportunity to spot talent because the woman who got there and the truth be told is that she probably traveled a harder path than, than her male counterparts. Um, and even if she didn't, uh, her path will eventually get harder. So. Uh, I think uh, try to be a role model, but more important than that, the way to be a role model is like try to pay it forward. Uh, you spoke like a true leader. I think that's uh, that's so important for so many women out there because the number of women in tech is not that large. You know, I think we've definitely moved the needle forward, but I think it's still below 30%, um, if I'm not wrong. Uh, that is correct. We, we, we're probably close to that. And also it talks to the larger problem of the lack of women in STEM, you know, why more women are not pursuing STEM. But yeah. that's a topic for another uh, day and time. You know, we'll come back to, uh, you know, our agenda here. And uh, we're going to talk about um, our next segment, which is, um, you know, the X factor. It's talking about your uh, special talents, your very unique um, aspects of your personality? I never say no to any new experience, Anu. So whether it's trying out a new cuisine, tasting something new, or uh, something like, you know, skydiving or scuba diving, or I wouldn't say it's a hobby. It's a, probably a one-time experience, uh, but I would never say no if the opportunity comes. And uh, to a large part, that's helped me in uh, uh, in my marriage, in raising kids, because each kid is so different in personality. So you have to be very open to letting them also explore the new experiences when you do it yourself. Um, the other thing is uh, I give a lot of importance to friendships and uh, uh, in maintaining friendships. 
so uh, that actually uh, because i think i grew up in hyderabad and i this thing the third most important thing i think is something my x factor is i can laugh at myself and i can laugh at some pretty tragic situations uh, because see you cannot do anything about it like you know, there are people who are going to uh, you know you you might be heartbroken people may be disappointing you uh, you know uh, cheat you or something like that unless it's something earth shattering like it was when my father passed away most other situations you can look back and laugh at them and you can laugh at your your foolishness or your stupidity you can make a joke of it uh, so uh, i don't uh, believe in uh, you know crying over spilt milk but i don't forget the experience i just learn from it uh, something recently i learned for uh for our, my emotional health is learning how to forgive you know it's just unburdens you you know there's invariably you're going to find people in the world who have wronged you or well somebody has not been fair something has not been fair and yes that is true you have to acknowledge that but uh, instead of trying to make them come to see your viewpoint and this thing it's it's okay it's okay you don't have to deny that you've been wrong but it's okay to forgive and it helps you greatly it lightens you yeah and you know i i think that's something a lot of people regardless of their age and gender can can appreciate and uh, relate to uh of course again we're, we're talking about a territory that you know can be all consuming uh we we get into that and you don't know you know where the other side of it is so yes. everybody has i guess their own uh, capacity and way of processing uh what has happened and and also the way of reacting and responding to yeah. you know to those personal situations but i think um if you're doing that more power to you um you know yeah. the art of letting go and um I I really think you're very inspirational in that uh, everything you've talked about yourself I've actually seen you know uh, that with my own eyes I've experienced that not just you know at a good point in time I think all through these years so I uh, have nothing but healthy uh, respect for that um, I certainly don't have the kind of sense of adventurous spirit that you have and I wish I had more of that but again you know this is all about uh each of us have our imperfections but then we're going to learn from each other and we're going to build each other up and you know uh by listening to each other's stories and feeling inspired and saying the next thing i want to do is go and do skydiving i'm just kidding but anyways uh thank you so much anu for sharing um for sharing that and um you know uh, our our next segment really talks about some of it that you've already talked about your emotional health but um uh talk to me about self care on a day to day basis how do you take care of yourself uh whether it's uh, you know mental health physical health emotional spiritual health are there any routines that you follow is there anything that you would like to kind of uh, talk about so uh i take great care of my skin so i <laughs> i probably spend an inordinate amount of time uh taking care of skin and uh you've trying out various ayurveda products but that's kind of like a hobby uh but that's certainly not the main aspect the main thing that has helped me how i take care of myself is i let go of the desire to be perfect okay and the let go of the desire to meet somebody else's expectations i and i even don't um uh just be kind to yourself you know i i think as women we spend a lot of time we are naturally nurturing and kind to our children to our husbands but i think we have to be kind to ourselves and it's okay it's okay if the you know dishes are not done for the night it's okay you forgot to meditate today <laughs> it's okay you know it, it can happen tomorrow the world is uh, you know not going to stop for you uh something i still haven't learned is to prioritize sleep i'm just a night owl because i'm so curious about so many things so i spend an inordinate amount of time but i realized more and more that that's a priority i plan to prioritize that but it's very important uh and uh something as simple as um, adding uh, like you know in in for 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 physical health small exercise regimen like uh, just a simple walk i know it's we are we live in a cold atmosphere but uh, we all live in a colonial style home so there's stairs Uh, right after a meal about 20 minutes after a meal 
just do 20 minute walk or go up and down the stairs like 10 times and that does wonders i i really does wonders to your uh, to your insulin level and you know your 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 sugar level i'm not diabetic i'm pre diabetic but it really makes a big difference That's great anu anything else that you want to talk about yeah i i i hear this whole thing uh, i don't know i hear this a lot oh women are like the biggest enemies of women or whatever i hear this a lot mm. i think that's uh, a myth um i have only seen it in this uh, some of these serials usually that's that's the case when there somehow a man is involved otherwise i think women are fine my biggest mentors my best friends the people i laugh with the most that i have lovely time with are have all been women like whether it's my grand moms my mom my sister uh colleagues uh friends school friends college friends uh sisters in law aunts they've all been women like the where i am women had a large role to play in it so i think we have to really um, empower each other and of course we'll empower men also in the process no no doubt about it but i think uh, that's not something that we should hang on to that women are women's biggest enemies i don't think that's true i don't i think we stop believing that and we understand that uh, we have a lot to contribute to each other well said um all right anu it was uh, wonderful chatting with you and really uh, getting to know you up close uh, enjoyed learning a lot about your childhood and all the influences that have shaped the person you are and i can't be more grateful I'm really really thankful to uh, to your parents and um your teachers and your friends for having the influences they've had otherwise you'd have missed out on um, you know a wonderful personality uh, like you amidst us so thank you so much anu it was such a pleasure talking to you thanks for giving me this opportunity and uh, i know i went way over time probably but it was lovely talking to you likewise likewise thank you so much uh, I want to thank my audience too. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, conversation uh, with Anu and Sarvagun Sampan. Uh, I'd highly encourage you to subscribe to this channel so you can continue to come back each week to uh, meet more interesting uh, and fascinating women uh, like Anu and really uh, understanding their journeys and their perspectives on so many things. Thank you so much and have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you.